Today we'll take a look at Sylvester Stallone and see which facial plastic surgeries he may have had. Stay tuned for cost of the procedures at the end of this video. This video has been sponsored by Vessi. More on them later. In 1974, at the age of 28, Sylvester has a Norwood II type of male pattern hair loss. He has frontotemporal recession and you can see here that he has a very strong masculine nose as well as a very good strong chin. In 1976 at the age of 30, I can appreciate here the asymmetry in his brows. The right side is higher up than the left and he also has his entire right orbit of the eye is sitting higher than the left. It's very common. He also has congenital ptosis which is different from having excessive upper eyelid skin that we call dermatochalasis. In his case, it appears that he has upper eyelid ptosis. I also think that Sylvester has a very characteristic mature look, partly because of the lateral canthus of the eye being lower than the medial canthus of the eye. In 1977, at the age of 31, what I'm appreciating in these images is congenital unilateral lower lip palsy. That's weakness of one side of the lower lip in his case, it's weakness of the left side, meaning that the left depressor labi inferioris muscle on the left-hand side is not contracting at the same strength as the right side. The way that this is treated when patients want it addressed is to then weaken the healthy depressor labi inferioris, in this case, his right side, so that it doesn't pull as much. And you can see this throughout the years in many different images this type of difference and it again gives him a very characteristic lower third of the face. <coughs> oh. No. oh wait, it's okay. I'm wearing my waterproof Vessi shoes. Have you guys heard of Vessi, today's video sponsor? Vessi shoes are made from Dymatex, a dual climate mint material that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. The best part of them is that they're waterproof. I personally also like the design as it's very sleek and minimalistic. They're very comfortable, lightweight, and breathable. I love taking them out when I go to the park with my wife and my daughter. Ever since I got them, Vessi has been my go-to shoes for day to day because of how versatile and comfortable they are. Also, if it ever rains unexpectedly, I don't have to worry about getting my socks wet. Check them out in the link below, Vessi.com, for your pair of Vessi shoes. Also, Vessi offers free shipping in the countries that you see on screen here. Thanks again, Vessi. Use my code Dr. Gary for $25 off of your Vessi shoes. In 1978, at the age of 32, I'm not seeing any changes. In 1979, at the age of 33, what I appreciate here is just the naturalness of his nose. It's very well balanced with the rest of his face. And he has this very impressive lateral red lip eversion. Some patients come to me asking for like a corner lip lift. In this case, this is someone who absolutely would not qualify because he already has very nice eversion on the lateral aspect of his upper lip. In 1980, at the age of 34, I'm not seeing any changes. 1981, at the age of 35, it appears that Sylvester goes through some weight loss and his jawline is just looking a lot more chiseled because of that. He does have more prominent forehead wrinkles and that's partly due to the lifting of the brows because of his underlying ptosis. In 1982, at the age of 36, the weight loss has definitely created a better jawline definition, but it has also led to some mid-face volume loss and that appears to be addressed later on. From the age of 37 in 1983 to the age of 50 in 1996, I'm not appreciating any changes in Sylvester Stallone's face as far as facial plastic procedures are concerned. In 1997, at the age of 51, it looks to me like Sylvester Stallone has had a facelift and fat transfer performed to the face. What I'm appreciating is the blunting of the intertragal notch. And you can see in this image that we're putting up on the screen, just below the tragus is this very specific area called the intertragal notch. And depending on how incisions are designed for facelift surgery, sometimes that notch can be blunted. And that is a giveaway for plastic surgery. Also, it looks like he may have had his upper eyelid ptosis 
repaired, or at least partially repaired, and that's what I'm appreciating in these images. In 1998, at the age of 52, there are no noticeable changes. Same in 1999, at the age of 53. In 2000, at the age of 54, what I'm seeing are some signs of a hair transplant. In this case, what I think happened was an FUT procedure, partly because of the year in 2000, FUE really wasn't being done. Uh, so FUT is the most likely method that he had, and it looks like he had maybe about 1,000 to 1,200 grafts just to strengthen and slightly lower the hairline, particularly laterally in the frontotemporal zone. FUT is follicular unit transplantation, and it involves removing a strip of scalp tissue from the back of the head, then breaking it up into all the separate grafts under the microscope and transplanting them typically to the front of the scalp. The back is then closed with either staples or sutures. In my practice, I prefer using sutures. Those sutures are then removed 10 to 14 days after surgery. And what results in the back is a linear scar that is ideally a thin scar, but sometimes you can't completely anticipate what that scarring will look like. At the age of 55 in 2001, what I'm noticing are those heavy grafts at the hairline from the hair transplant. It looks like fewer single hair grafts were transplanted to the hairline and that gives a bit of a heavy sense at the hairline and reduces its naturalness. In 2002, at the age of 56, what I'm seeing are signs of a surgical hairline advancement coupled with a brow lift. Now, this is an interesting combination, and the reason this is a popular combination to employ is because you're already making an incision right at the hairline, and using that incision, you can both lower somebody's hairline and you can also raise the eyebrows since you can work through that same incision. A surgical hairline advancement is not commonly performed in men, especially younger men. However, in older men with a stable hairline and overall hair features, it can be a useful modality to bring down good density lower down on the forehead if that's desired. And the reason why I think I see signs of a surgical hairline advancement as early as 2002 is that as we go on and we look at additional images later on, you'll start to appreciate the scar at the hairline. This type of scar is not something that we see with a regular hair transplant. In 2003, at the age of 57, I'm not seeing any changes. Same in 2004. In 2005, what I can appreciate in this image on his left hand side, his left ear, you can really see the facelift scar quite visible in this image, but I don't think he's had any additional surgeries. Age 60, no change. Age 61 and 62 and 63, no changes. In 2010, at the age of 64, what I'm noticing is, the again, the lack of tragal outline. If you look at his right ear here, especially focusing on the tragus, this little piece right here, from his original facelift, it's really obliterated the tragal outline. 2011, and 2012 and 2013 no significant changes 2014 also age 68 no major change 2015 2016 17 18 19 20 21 still no change in 2022 what i'm seeing here quite clearly to me is that surgical hairline advancement scar that is quite visible as his skin has gotten a bit darker, whether from sun or some other coloring. He has maintained this lighter, paler scar from the surgical hairline advancement, and that is visible here. But I don't think at the age of 76 that he's had any additional procedures. So on the high end, the total of all these procedures is $150,000. Since you like this video on Sylvester Stallone, make sure to check out my facial plastic surgery analysis on Tom Cruise. Click on the card and I'll see you there.